Hey everybody, these Blackmagic Design Mini and Micro Converters are pretty cool products. They do a lot of very cool things. And just right out of the package, they're very, very useful and can help to resolve a lot of different situations, a lot of challenges that we have doing video production. However, I get the feeling from talking to people who watch this channel that a lot of you have never really unleashed the full potential that these things have because you've never taken the time to either read the manual or to do a firmware update or to launch the configuration software that's available from Blackmagic in order to unlock some additional features that are not necessarily obvious from the factory. I would venture to guess that most of the people that own these mini converters are aware that there are some configuration options that are available right on the unit through the dip switch interface that happen, happens to be on the side there. And probably also that there's a cheat sheet on the back letting you know what those dip switches do. But how many of you are actually aware that there are a lot of additional options available within the software when you connect these to a computer over USB? So first of all, let's talk about where you get that software. To get the software, of course, you're going to go to the Blackmagic Design website and blackmagicdesign.com. From there, you'll go up to the support link and click on that. And that will take you to the support page. From there, we're going to want to scroll down a little bit and select the broadcast and ATEM converters link that's in here. And that will update the list of downloads just below. From there, we're going to want to scroll down within that section and find the newest version of Blackmagic converters update. In this case, it's 7.6.1. I happen to be on Windows, so I'm going to click on the Windows link. That will bring up a little dialog where you can provide some contact information so Blackmagic can update you on current and new products. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the download only link here to start the download. Once that download is finished, you can go ahead and open up the setup utility and install it like any other piece of software. Once it's installed, we can launch it by going to the start menu, scrolling down to Blackmagic Design. And then within there, we're going to search for Converters Setup. At this point, you're going to want to grab a USB cable for whatever type of USB interface your device happens to have. For most of these mini converters, that's going to be at either a mini USB or a USB-C, one of the two. You just have to take a look and see which one it has. The newer products have the USB-C. The older ones have the USB mini B connector. From there, we can just plug that in, plug in power, and then the device should show up within the software. I happen to have the Blackmagic SDI to analog 4K converter in here. And in order to configure that device, I'm just going to click on this little icon down here. And that will show me the configuration options that are available for this product. First of all, you can see here that it has the options for controlling the video levels. So if you find that your video level is not bright enough or maybe a little bit too bright, you can tweak that here. And you've got sliders for both video and for your component video signals as well. We also have options here to control the type of down conversion when the uh, signal is either HD or Ultra HD and we want to output the standard definition. And then we have an option here to tell the device to clip the video signal to legal levels because digital is able to represent some levels that analog cannot. So in the process of converting from digital to analog, we might need to limit the output levels. Over on the audio page, we've got options to control the signal levels there as well. And when the device is configured to output analog, these top two sliders apply. And when the device is configured to output AES EBU digital, this bottom slider applies. This allows you to adjust the audio levels to some degree. So we can go down quite a bit here or bring it up in case the signal needs to be a little bit hotter. We'll take a look at another converter. This is the SDI to HDMI 6 gig. I'm going to click on the properties button. You can see here we can actually load a 3D LUT or lookup table to alter the color of the output of the device. We can load in cube files that have been prepared elsewhere. We also have the option of tweaking the audio levels on the HDMI or analog outputs. The HDMI to SDI converters don't have so many configuration op options as the other, but we can alter the signal levels. If the firmware on your device is out of date, you can actually update that over here on the About tab. It will show a software version, and then there will be an Update button here. With some devices and some versions of the update software, you'll find that an update is required, and when you click on the Properties button, it will force the update right then. It's always a good idea to keep your software up to date. Not only is Blackmagic adding new features, but they also include fixes for any issues that they've discovered over the years. The microconverters are a little bit different because instead of having separate power, they receive their power over USB. So we just need to hook up a USB cable for both power and data. Plug in a USB cable here. 
and the device will pop up within the software. The same thing happens here. We click on the Properties button and we can see the configuration options. Now you'll see more options with the microconverters than you do with the mini converters because the microconverters don't have any dip switches for configuration on the device itself. So if you want to do any configuration, you have to use the software. One question I get a lot is how to make sure that you're able to use an SDI camera with an ATEM Mini and be able to have camera control and tally and, and so forth. There's an option in the configuration software that needs to be set in order for that to work properly. If we go into the properties, you see one of the things here is the ATEM camera ID. This has to match the input number on your ATEM Mini if you want your switcher to be able to control your camera. Likewise, that camera number setting should match the setting in your Blackmagic SDI-based camera. So, that's all there is to it. You just have to download the software, connect your converter to a computer with USB, launch the software, and then you're able to access those additional configuration options that are not available on the device itself. If you have any questions about this, please be sure to leave those in the comment section down below, or join us over on my Discord server, where we can talk to a lot of people in the video production community, many of which are very helpful and be able to answer any questions you might have. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I do video production related content about once a week. I also make videos available early to those who join the YouTube membership program or on Patreon, links to those, both of those down below. You get early access to videos, you get additional videos and some other perks as well, including access to my crewaccess.com video production management website. That's a great perk. So thanks everyone for watching and have a fantastic day.